Google, Microsoft, and Anthropic, please report to the principal's office. Yes, friends, these three companies have officially been summoned to the White House to meet with the Vice President, Kamala Harris. It's time for some good old-fashioned American regulation. How concerned are you about AI? Um, I think we can manage this for sure. I think we need to take it seriously. I think now is a great time to be doing this. It's good to try to get ahead of this. It's definitely going to be a challenge, but it's one I'm sure we can handle. But there's also an AI that has been trained to discover cancer quicker than any other method on the planet, and an AI built for emotional support. And on this episode of AI Focus, we get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. And stay till the end to go in depth on the new AI tech that can read your mind and turn it into text with no invasive surgery, just plain brain scans. Not all AI advancement is bad. Doctors, scientists, and researchers in the UK have built an artificial intelligence model that can accurately identify cancer, speeding up the diagnosis of the disease and fast-tracking patients to treatment. Cancer accounts for 10 million deaths annually, but it can often be cured if detected early and eradicated swiftly. This new AI tool can identify whether abnormal growths on CT scans are cancerous, and the algorithm performs more swiftly and accurately than current methods according to findings published in the Lancet's eBiomedicine journal. But how was the algorithm trained? The team used CT scans of 500 patients with large lung nodules to develop an AI algorithm using radiomics. This method allows for pertinent info to be extracted that is not easily spotable by the human eye. Then it was time for testing. The study uses a measure called Area Under the Curve, or AUC, to see how good that model was at predicting cancer. The highest score is a 1, and a score of 0.5 would mean the AI was randomly guessing. The algorithm scored 0.87, which is higher than the BRIC score of 0.67 used currently, and the Herder score of 0.83. Next, they plan on testing the AI in patients in the clinic to see if it can accurately predict their risk of lung cancer. It's not yet ready to become a part of the healthcare system, but this AI will most definitely speed up detection of lung cancer which makes up 21% of all cancer diagnoses. The study's chief investigator, Dr. Richard Lee, said people diagnosed with lung cancer at the earliest stage are much more likely to survive for five years when compared with those whose cancer is caught late. Heck, there's even an emotional support AI out there called Pi, released by AI startup Inflection AI. It aims to be a kind and supportive companion that's on your side, according to the company but they also stress that it is nothing like a human. Generative AI is too unreliable and full of inaccuracies to be dependent on them for important tasks, but they're great for conversation, especially since companies are spending more time tweaking them to have personalities. But of course, this AI companionship could go terribly wrong. If someone has serious mental challenges and uses a chatbot as a therapist, there are obvious risks to that. The AI has knowledge of everything on the internet, and can remember what you told it, which can mess with your head. It's also not legally or ethically accountable to a Hippocratic Oath or licensing board. Mustafa Suleiman, the CEO of Inflection AI, says his aim is to build trustworthy AI that will know what it does not know and doesn't pretend to be something it's not. He also stressed that Pi is designed to tell a user to get help if they express wanting to harm themselves or others. Pi's algorithm was trained by 600 part-time teachers that included therapists. The goal was to make Pi more factually accurate, sensitive, and lighthearted when appropriate. On misogyny and racism, Pi has strong opinions, while on geopolitics, it remains unbiased. But what's special about Pi is that it can help you prioritize and focus in a human-like way. It has infinite patience, and you don't have to worry about dumping stress on a family member or a friend. Pi has no life, it has nothing but time, and is actually full of tons of detailed advice. One author from the New York Times wrote that in a session with Pi, it recommended she make space for negative feelings and recommended trying being grateful for one thing. The writer replied, pass. Pi responded with, a lot of people find it difficult to relax on command. It completely ignored the rudeness and continued with kindness. There is a space for this to exist if the company can figure out how to eliminate danger. Speaking of danger, let's talk about what the White House is doing to keep AI companies in check, shall we? If you watched the video before the last one I posted, you'll see that I talked about the EU's 
concrete steps toward AI regulation. I mean, they are really moving the chains over there. I also criticized my own country's lack of any real initiative towards regulating AI. And I guess they must have watched my video because the Biden administration literally just called the CEOs of Google, Microsoft, and Anthropic to Washington, D.C. So the CEOs in attendance were Sam Altman of OpenAI, Satya Nadella of Microsoft, Sundar Pichai of Google, and Dario Amode of Anthropic. Say that five times fast. Satya Nadella did not look happy to have his schedule interfered with. Here, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you hope to get out of the meeting today? Do you think the White House is moving quickly enough on regulation? For two hours in the White House, Kamala Harris urged the tech leaders to seriously consider concerns over safety while developing this technology. President Biden even popped his head in for a quick second and told them that what they're doing has enormous potential and enormous danger. Great job, Joe. No one knew that. Some of Biden's top appointees have promised to intervene if the tech is used in a harmful way. And even New York Senator Chuck Schumer has proposed they draft legislation around regulating AI. In addition, the administration pledged to release draft guidelines for government agencies to make sure their use of AI protects human rights and safety. VP Harris went on to say, the private sector has an ethical, moral, and legal responsibility to ensure the safety and security of their product, and every company must comply with existing laws to protect the American people. Having Sundar Pichai in the same room with his arch rivals will be interesting in itself. I imagine them all trying to have a serious talk about AI safeguards while simultaneously in their minds planning how they're going to one-up each other. After ChatGPT's arrival on the scene, it seems like every major company has started scrambling, trying to find ways to implement AI into their products, and it also seems like not much thought is being put into how safe this might be. This is what led to the open letter calling for a six-month pause on training AI, and the resignation of who they call the godfather of AI. With the EU already prepared to vote on regulations they started creating three years ago, it seems the White House may be giving too little too late. If it's any consolation, the US Department of Commerce has been toying with the idea of regulations that could require AI models to go through a certification process before release. I think the CEOs are going to show up to be polite and then immediately get back to work and the government will stay clueless. It's really important and it's a good time for it. Morning. Uh, hey, are you, Do you think the White House- I am yeah. super late. Okay. I, uh, understood, understood. Are you, is the White House moving quickly enough though on regulation, do you think? Hard to say before the meeting, but I think they're like really seriously engaged and wanna, you know, I want to get to the right place on this. What's your Thank pitch you. to the administration today? We'll figure it out in the meeting. <laughs> then again, there are tech experts who claim that if we start regulating now, China will have a leg up in the AI race. And that's something I don't think anyone wants either. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and love to stay updated on all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Alexander Wang, founder of Scale AI, said, The United States is in a relatively precarious position, and we have to make sure we move fastest on the technology. China has released plans to become the global leader in AI by 2030, and there's even a strategy for it to be implemented into its military. It's like World War II, when those who were fastest to integrate new technologies into their warfare won. It's obvious that AI could, quote, shift the balance of diplomatic power. As Wang put it, America is winning the AI race now, but that might not be the case if we start regulating without understanding what it can do to our own technological development. But Ashton Kutcher provides a silver lining to the problem. I bet you didn't have that on your bingo card. Kutcher, whose company Sound Ventures has invested millions into AI, says China's authoritarian regime could hold them back. China can't afford to have an unpredictable model because what happens when that model starts outputting ideas that are against what the country is in favor of? So their models would have to be tweaked in order to ensure all outcomes align with the Communist Party ideals. This will almost undoubtedly reduce their AI's quality. Kutcher did caution us to not start regulating AI so quickly so that we may maintain the advantage that we have. Wang also encouraged AI programs to start initiating contact with the federal government for military and defense uses of the tech. I mean, the reality is, China's already doing it. Talk about being between a rock and a hard place. 
On one side, if we slow down AI development, China becomes the most powerful and feared nation in the world. But if we continue down this path, we could end up creating a super intelligence, and there's no telling what that means. I think I need a drink. Meanwhile, somebody has to tell Elon that his whole Neuralink project may become obsolete. Let's get into thought to text, shall we? Scientists have developed a non-invasive AI system that can translate brain activity into a stream of text, according to a peer-reviewed study from Nature Neuroscience. It's called a semantic decoder and could work wonders for those who lost the ability to speak after suffering from strokes and other degenerative diseases. Researchers at the University of Texas at Austin created the system using a transformer model, like the type that supports OpenAI's ChatGPT. The system requires no surgical implants. The study's participants trained the decoder by listening to hours of podcasts within an fMRI scanner, a large machine that measures brain activity. Once the semantic decoder is trained, it can generate text when the participant is listening to or imagines telling a story. The text that results is not an exact transcript, but it's designed with the intent of capturing general ideas. Around half the time, the system produces text that closely or precisely matches the intended meaning of the participant's original words. For example, when a participant heard, I don't even have my driver's license yet, the thoughts translated to, she has not even started to learn to drive yet. Then there's this example, I didn't know whether to scream, cry, or run away. Instead, I said, leave me alone, was decoded as, started to scream and cry, and then just said, I told you to leave me alone. Alexander Huth, one leader of the study, said, for a non-invasive method, this is a real leap forward compared to what's been done before, which is typically single words or short sentences. And get this, participants were also asked to watch four videos without audio while in the scanner, and the AI system accurately described certain events from them. Right now, the decoder can't be used outside of a lab with an fMRI system, but the researchers believe it could be one day used via more portable brain imaging machines. Please, let me know your thoughts in the comments. What should we do with AI? Pause it or keep advancing? What do you like about it? What don't you like? In the meantime, click that video on the screen to see why the godfather of AI quit his job at Google and is now warning us all of the dangers we may face. Thanks for visiting AI Focus.